Hey, Larkin Rose here. Time for another pet peeve of mine, of which I have so many. So, this came up a zillion years ago. I, I watched Star Trek, like, Next Generation, or I can't even remember which is which. And they had this thing of the prime directive, where, well, we don't interfere in other cultures and, and blah, blah, blah. Um, and recently, Amanda and I have been watching a thing called The Orville, which is sort of a homage to Star Trek. And they have a similar thing of like, well, we're not going to interfere with with civilizations that are evolving. And um, and it ties in with the whole notion of, of multiculturalism. And from the first time I saw it in Star Trek to sing it in the Orville and every other place, I thought, that is fucking stupid. And it absolutely is. The notion is basically, well, we may not approve of what these civilizations are doing, like genocide and enslaving each other and doing horrible violence, but we have to let them evolve and figure it out. It's not up to us to interfere which morally is despicable and idiotic. It's like saying, oh, look at that, uh, that playground over there, and that bully's just beating the crap out of that little kid. But, you know, we can't intervene because we know more and we're stronger, so it's not our place to stop the bully from beating the crap out of an innocent victim. No, we have to let the bully evolve in his own time until he understands... And so it's patently stupid. First of all, if you have a culture that doesn't abide by the non-aggression principle and abuses people, like initiates violence against people, that part of your culture is shit and it should be stopped by any means necessary. Now, there's a whole bunch of cultural aspects and, and the way people look at things and religious rights and all sorts of things that aren't aggression that I would never interfere with. Because, like, people can organize in a gazillion different ways and they can see the world in a zillion different ways or see the universe in a zillion different ways or whatever. So it's important to make the distinction between you, yeah, I'm not going to tell you you have to have my world view about everything, but if an aggressor is harming an innocent, yeah, that should be stopped. And just saying, well, it's that's their culture, is the most idiotic excuse ever. Because it's, and you can say it about any culture, like there's plenty of violence in any culture, you know, going back a long time. It's not the same in every culture. Some are way more violent than others. But the idea that you're supposed to, well, that's the way they do things, so we're supposed to respect it. No, we're not. Like the way... We, like the people in the U.S., used to do things, included slavery. Now, if we could go back in time to, you know, 1840 to a slave plantation, should we go, well, it's not our place to intervene because now we're more advanced and enlightened and it would be wrong for us to... No, it wouldn't. <laughs> kind of imbecilic notion is that. So I remember the first time I saw it on Star Trek, that's freaking stupid. Now, there are considerations of we don't, like, if a culture is growing and stuff, for them to find out that there's, like, way advanced civilizations that they didn't know about, and, like, yeah, that can mess up things and confuse them. And, and if they're violent, definitely don't hand them even more potent weapons um, <laughs> so they can murder and enslave each other even more efficiently. Like, okay, we'll let you take a while to figure out how to more efficiently abuse and murder each other. But the idea that this thing called culture counts as sort of an excuse for injustice is just ridiculous to me. No, every opinion is not equally valid. No, every culture is not equally, like, worthy of respect. And to the people who can't make the distinctions, like, you can all the way look at you know, Rome and, ooh, the Colosseum and the Parthenon and all these cool, amazing things. You can go, those were amazing achievements. And also, the slavery was really bad in the going around the world, like, murdering people and violently conquering them. That's really bad, too. Like, if you can't make the distinction between 
it's impressive that, that they did X, but also the fact that they were initiating violence, that's not okay. It's the same thing in this country where you can go, like, look at some big old plantation house and go, oh, that's so cool. Also, it was a slave plantation. That's really freaking evil. And to not be able to distinguish between the two and to call it just culture as if sticking the label of culture on it somehow gives it an excuse is just patently stupid. And uh, imagine somebody from the future, 100 years, 1,000 years, whatever, and they come back here and they're looking at what we've figured out and what we haven't figured out. And like they, <laughs> they're wandering along and in some back alley, there's some thugs like beating up and mugging some guy or something. D why on earth would you think their proper response, if they have the ability to stop that, should be, well, we're going to let these people do this. We're going to let the abusers victimize the innocent because their culture has to learn. That's just so patently stupid. And here's the thing that, that it seems to actually make some people uncomfortable, which is very weird to me. Lots of people, especially the, you know, people who believe in defending freedom and, and want to enforce justice, they own firearms, for the exp including me, for the express purpose of being able to kill people. Like, I don't hunt. I know lots of people who hunt. I own firearms for one purpose, so I have the ability to kill human beings. Thankfully, I've never needed to do that. And I really, really, really hope I make it all the way to being dead without ever needing to do that. But I still have it so I have the ability to do that. Because sometimes people do things that are so bad and horrible and destructive to other innocent people that the only recourse left to those trying to stop them is deadly force. That's why I own firearms. That's why a ton of people I know own firearms. And there's this, well, there's several levels of the stupidity. The whole thing, you've probably heard, like, you know, wh whether you agree with it or not, you've heard it's built into the culture, the thing of, oh, little Jimmy's been bullied by Butch or something. Well, don't you stoop to his level and fight, little Jimmy. Just let him beat the crap out of you, which is immoral and stupid and idiotic. If the innocent has the ability, have the ability to use overwhelming force to defeat aggressors, do it. And the best thing that can possibly happen to a group, a society, a whatever, is for the good people who don't use aggression to have more capability of the use of force than the aggressors, which is why I want lots and lots of good people to be armed so that they have the ability, if some evil psycho is victimizing somebody, to stop them. The idea that there's something wrong with good people having that ability is a bonkers idea that, of course, is pushed by parasitical ruling classes. Don't take the law into your own hands. Call the authorities, and they'll come running. If you see something, say something. Be a paranoid little pansy who hides in the corner as innocent people be abused. But don't you dare imagine that you're, like, a grown-up who maybe should take it upon himself to defend the innocent. No, we can't have that. So that ridiculous message can be found all over the place coming from the parasite class because the main thing they don't want grown-ups <laughs> defending themselves from is the thugs of the parasite class. So, but to look at uh, to, to look at different groups and call them a culture, whether you're talking about different planets or different cultures, and somehow, like, just give them a pass from morality. Oh, that's just how they do things. They, you know, they take turns attacking each other's camp and, and slaughtering men, women, and children. Like, that's not okay when white people do it. It's also not okay when brown people do it or people of any other color. It's not okay. And blaming it on culture and acting like, well, we shouldn't intervene... We, meaning literally anybody in the universe who understands self-ownership, should intervene to stop aggressors from hurting innocent people. And it just is actually a stupid episode of the Orville 
And there's a lot of stupid things in that show. It's still sort of entertaining and fun, and they bring up fun points, but there's a lot of stupid stuff. And God, pay somebody to be a consultant regarding physics. Like every episode, I can barely stomach how many things they get colossally wrong. And not even just the things you have to get wrong to have like a, a space series. Anyway, that's a sidetrack. But yeah, the philosophical thing of, oh, we're not going to intervene is just, it's patently stupid. And the idea that, oh, well, that's what their culture does, so who are we to say that it's wrong? Human beings. Human beings are the ones who should say it's wrong when somebody violently victimizes somebody else. That's who we are to intervene. And we, as anybody, that doesn't depend on the technology. Now, there are a lot of arrangements that if people choose to be in, in sort of crappy relationships, like if I see somebody, you know, in some crappy relationship and I think that the person's sort of abusive to them or something, I'm not going to violently intervene and say, you're not allowed to have that relationship with this person who's sort of a butthead. Now, if the person says, okay, now I'm being victimized, get me out of here, that's a different story. So in something like North Korea where lots of people are indoctrinated so deeply that they think the rest of the world is horrible. But luckily, we have our non-pooping great leader. <laughs> you think I'm joking? Look it up. To save us all from the blah, blah, blah. So there's a certain amount of, of indoctrination that people fall for that, that will make some people uh, clueless enough that they'll actually choose to continue to be victimized in that way which is really sad. But to me, something that would be justified in literally any place under any regime anywhere, and this would be so fun to see it happen, um, is if there's some you know billionaire voluntarist who's like, well, we have a whole bunch of former military people who are now anarchists. They understand the non-aggression principle. They're still pretty damn good at combat, and now they realize that what they were being used for, the vast majority of it wasn't moral and it was wrong, but they still have those skills. And what if we paid some of them to literally actually be protectors? And they're, you know, they, they understand things to the point where they don't have the excuse of, I'm just following orders. No, what you do, you're responsible for. But if you and the people around you go, yeah, this is justified, inherently justified, not because somebody told us to, but like these people right now are violently attacking these people. Let's go stop the attackers. It would be amazing to see, especially in areas where you don't get giant governments who are going to intervene and, and make everything way worse. But in like crappy little dictatorships in, in third world countries, to have some billionaire <laughs> voluntarists hire a bunch of former military people and it's like, well, there's these warlords that took over the government down in some random country in Africa or something. And all we're going to do is drive in with lots of machinery that's very good at destruction and say, hey, does anybody here want to leave? Because you can leave. And if anybody tries to stop you, we will kill them for you. And like to do that in North Korea or wherever, um, or a lot of these smaller places that like their, their government is puny enough that literally just some billionaire random guy <laughs> voluntarist could raise an army of people who actually act morally. They don't just follow orders. They go, okay, we'll see what's going on. We don't even trespass. We don't steal. We only use defensive force and we only go on property where we've been invited by the people who own it. And we're really good at what we do. So if somebody says, oh, these people are like roving around and attacking this, these people or whatever, you literally just have them go in and create a free market by violently repelling or sometimes all the way exterminating the violent thugs, the individuals who actually commit that. Not, oh, this category of people, a lot of them did bad things. Let's go slaughter them all. No, that's not how actual morality works. But... <clears throat> The fact that there's this weird push to pretend that all cultures are morally equal, um, that, that ties in with the attempt to completely demonize the good things about Western civilization. 
And I've talked before on, in a video about how there are the evolution of the concepts of non-aggression and self-ownership, um, even without using those words, is this fascinating thing that you can see it evolving in Rome and then over in the British Empire, despite the fact that at the same time they're being violent imperialist monsters and enslaving and slaughtering people. So it's not like, oh, they were spreading goodness. No, they were spreading violence and domination. And weirdly, inside that, there were bits and pieces of the, pieces of the culture that actually taught non-aggression and respect for self-ownership in the most weird, twisted, hypocritical way imaginable, given the context of how it got there. Um, but when people want to pretend that, oh, like one of the, one of the most ridiculous things is people just suck at thinking in principles. If you think in principles, it's very easy to look at a whole bunch of conflicts, um, like, what's going on in Gaza and, and Israel as, well, who's the good guys and who's the bad guys? Well, chances are in the violent conflict, there's a hell of a lot of bad guys. Most of the good guys aren't even in the conflict. They're trying to live their lives and occasionally getting blown up. And so when somebody says the Palestinians are the good guys because Israel is the bad guy, first of all, the Israeli government like has lots of bad guys in it, exactly the same way the U.S. military has lots of bad guys in it. Like, that doesn't mean Israel is evil. Israel's a place. It doesn't think anything. It doesn't do anything. It's a place that exists. There are people in it. Some of the people in it do nasty things. Some of the people in it believe stupid things, which is exactly the same <laughs> case with the U.S. Lots of Americans believe stupid authoritarian things. Some of them commit stupid authoritarian injustices, cops, soldiers, whatever. But the fact that people so want to choose sides that you have, like one of the weirdest things is watching like the LGBTQ, ABC, one, two, three, whatever that letter thing is up to now, waving the, the, the Palestinian flag and saying, we're, we're gonna be on the side of Hamas. Hamas is not on your side. Now, if you said, we're on the side of any victims of violent aggression, okay, me too, in either direction, in every scenario ever. But the fact that some innocent people are being victimized over here doesn't mean their culture doesn't include a lot of stupid, backwards, caveman-like violent idiocy and evil. And it freaking does. There's a lot of that shit still in, in Saudi Arabia and in a lot of places in the Middle East. And I know, oh, you're not supposed to say that. I don't give a shit. And the same thing's true is down in Africa, where there have been tribes that have been at war and commit atrocities against each other for a long time, including when Whitey wasn't there. And you could say the same thing about the, the indigenous tribes in, in North America before Whitey showed up. They weren't peaceful living in the Garden of Eden all the time. Some of the tribes were more peaceful. Some of them were more warlike. They went around conquering and stealing stuff and killing people. That's just kind of the human condition until we, like, figure out principles like self-ownership and non-aggression. But to not be able to make the distinction between principles and to think in terms of gangs either... It's just so weird. Like, I have no doubt, and I know a bunch of people who've been there who say, like, in Afghanistan or Pakistan, some of the nicest people in the world are there. And they're awesome, and I don't want them blown up. And there are things about cultures all over the place that are just backwards and primitive and violent and stupid. Only you're not supposed to say they're backwards and primitive and violent and stupid because somebody made up this random arbitrary rule that you're supposed to think that every worldview is equally valid. It's fucking not. If your worldview includes let's initiate violence against people who didn't threaten or hurt anybody, your worldview is shit. Now, there may be lots of things about your worldview and your culture and your art and your inventions and your technology that are cool, just like there was in the Roman Empire. That doesn't mean the slavery part and the violent domination part was okay. Same with the British Empire. Same with the U.S. imperialist monstrosity that's all over the place. 
but this weird notion that a culture should be viewed like as a whole. You either like the culture or you don't like the culture. And if you don't like any culture that isn't yours, then you're a horrible bigot who should be ashamed of blah, 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 blah. Like you, you have to pick and choose either the whole thing or nothing. Instead of saying, it's really cool they did this. It's really cool they figured out this. Their art is really cool. Their this is really cool. Their music is really cool. Also, they enslaved and murdered each other. That sucks. Just as much as it sucked when Whitey was doing it. Like, every, every group that has done that, it was wrong when they did that. And if anybody was there and had the ability to stop them from doing it, they should have. Not wait around to see if they figure out that was bad. Like, we're going to wait around to see if the schoolyard bully figures out that it's really not okay that he beats the crap out of the little kids at lunch every day. No, you stop him. That's the moral thing to do. But this weird, bogus... <sighs> It's not even pacifism because it's it's like pacifism if you're a normal person and then authoritarian violence if you're a thug of the state <laughs> because nobody who believes in government is a pacifist. It's utterly impossible. They all advocate the initiate, initiation of violence against tons of people they don't know. But this weird notion that we're supposed to just glom everything together and respect this culture and, and if you criticize it, you're racist or like if you point out if you point out that like white people in militaries and imperialist things did horrible things you're allowed to say that that's okay but if you point out that like black people or brown people or whatever that, that didn't all the way count as white that they did horrible things sometimes too ooh, you must be a racist that is so stupid and perhaps the most idiotic thing is when people point to the state of Israel and say, you're committing genocide and doing evil crap, even if the same thing is happening in the other direction, you're doing evil crap, and they go, oh, you're just an anti-Semite. That is so stupid and cowardly and just a bald-faced, idiotic lie. If you're Jewish and you do something evil, it's still evil. And someone saying that it's evil doesn't mean they're criticizing you for being Jewish. Like, what are we all five that we're going to fall for that crap that you either like me or don't like me. Choose who you like on the playground. If you're an aggressor, I don't stinking like you. I don't care about your color or what you say your religion is or where you were born. If you're an aggressor and you victimize and violently attack innocent people, you're a piece of shit. And you can be a white piece of shit. You can be a black piece of shit. You can be a Jewish piece of shit. You can be an atheist piece of shit. You can be a Christian piece of shit. At least you can pretend to be Christian. <laughs> I'm sure plenty of other Christians would say, wait a minute, you, you can't really be a Christian and do that. But I'll let them debate that part. But it's so weird that we're supposed to think that cultures deserve a, a get out of morality free card, which is if you think about it, pretty freaking bigoted and condescending. Oh, they can't be expected to peacefully coexist. Why not? <laughs> like, could anything be more insulting than talking as if, well, that group, of course they're going to do the violent thing all over the place, and we can't expect them to, ew, yes, we can. We can expect and demand don't attack innocent people, we can demand that from everybody, and we can and should use force to stop them from doing it, regardless of their color or our color or anything else. And when people try to throw anything else into the mix, whether it's cultural or racial or anything else, so that, oh, you can't, if you criticize that black person who killed a white person, it must be because you're racist. No, it's because I'm against murderers. And if the race was the other direction, I would still be against the murderer and in favor of defending the victim. And the fact that so many people seem to have trouble understanding that, especially when it comes to, like, nationalities. Like, if somebody over here did something and somebody innocent over here died, that person, you suck. If you killed an innocent person, you suck. Well, but they did this. Doesn't matter. You suck. You did something that harmed an innocent person, and you knew there was a high likelihood of that happening, 
or you all the way did it on pur purpose, you suck regardless of what anybody else anywhere else has ever done. Regardless of history, regardless of beliefs, regardless of pack mentality bullshit. And uh, I'll, I'll end with this, that a funny thing that I saw, because, um, you know, people, and people just do this, you know, people can complain that, look what white people do, everybody does this. It just happens that America was mostly white. And so in Hollywood in the early years, the the Indians were were the stereotypical Indian. Like they were barely even human. They were just they they fit that just generic <laughs> ass generalization of here's what the Indians were. They're bad and scary, and luckily the cowboys defeat them. And, uh, okay, wrong and dumb in so many ways. Um, and then the backlash was, no, they were all good and, and perfect and Whitey was the evil one. That is exactly as stupid. All you did was flip the stupid in the other direction. And it was funny because many years ago that I saw, um, I forget what it even was. It was, it was. it was like a documentary about the evolution of the depiction of, of indigenous Americans in Hollywood. And a number of... of uh, it, I still use the word Indian. I know it's stupid. <laughs> like That's just a handy term. It's not supposed to be an insult. If anything, it's insult to the dumbass who thought he was in India. Um, but being interviewed and saying, you know, we're not all good and we're not all bad. We're people. Like, we can be both. There can be Indians who do bad things. There can be Indians who do good things. Like, we're complex because we're human beings. When are we going to be depicted like that? And I think now that's finally happening with, with a bunch of different things where instead of like, this is the victim class because they're black or because they're Indian or because they're Jewish or because they're gay. And it's just, it's so ridiculous. Like even Silence of the Lambs, um, when, what was it? Uh, the The... What, is it Wild Bill, I think? The, the, the creepy, <laughs> the other psycho in the movie? And people complained, ah, you can't, like, have somebody be a cross-dresser or whatever he counted as and be evil? Oh, really? You're just automatically good? Like, if you have that quality, you're incapable of being evil? That's not how reality works, dumbass. And the idea that, like, well, now it's, it was always the cowboys were the good guys and the Indians were the bad guys. Yeah, that was dumb. That is completely inaccurate. <laughs> Historically, the friggin' U.S. infantry committed, like, mass genocide and forced eviction and lots of evil crap. But that wasn't all white people. Mostly it was all government agents. And so to turn it around and go, no, no, now the Indians always have to be the good guy. That's just idiotic. And you still see Hollywood doing that. So that now the hero always has to be, <laughs> leave it to South Park. Now the hero always has to be like a gay woman because they're always good and they always know how to do it. That's just such narrow, stupid thinking. And all it is is flipping the same stupid thinking from before and pretending that's an improvement. As if, well, it used to be that, you know, this group was the bad guy. But now these group, this group is always the, those are always the victims and these are always the aggressors. And just that stereotype is just so idiotic. And the mushy headed pack mentality that leads to that, it still plagues humanity. And you still see so many people incapable of thinking in principles and incapable of judging people by the content of their character and their actions instead of where they were born or what they say they believe or what their skin color is or or what culture they grew up in. And there are things about American culture that, I mean, there's a bunch of things about it that are just dumb, but like you have the right to have, to sit on your ass and have a <laughs> unhealthy diet. It's not good for you, but nobody should violently tell you you have to eat more healthy. But there are things about the culture that are patently stupid now and violent. The thing is that's been going down um, over the years, like, the most glaring example is it used to be considered okay and legal to own people in this country. And that was true of around the world. 
still is in a lot of places, that insane belief that slavery is okay and legitimate. But as humanity progresses and figures these things out and starts to get something vaguely resembling a moral compass, the idea that, like, no, America's bad, you should have white guilt, and we need reparations is just such a level of stupidity. Uh, I was actually, I may still do it, I was actually going to do a, a mostly flippant video about reparations, as if there's any way to figure that out. Well, somebody who looks sort of like you a few years ago did something bad to somebody who sort of looks like me. So what do you owe me for that? Like, let's tally up that, oh, my 27th cousin in this direction may or may not have done something bad to somebody who wasn't related to you, but kind of looks like you a little bit, despite the fact that there are sort of no pure bloods of any race anymore anymore. <laughs> So, like, all right, what's the fraction of, let's see, your point zero one two eight five six percent African, and we have to figure out who owned who. It. Just, it's so pack mentality stupidity. It's just designed to make people blame white people, which is just as dumb as saying the Indians are all scary savages. We have to go kill them all. It's just, it's the same stupid mentality. And until people get out of the notion that, that you're not allowed to criticize anything about a culture, you're not allowed to criticize, like, you're not allowed to criticize some of the just caveman, violent, shitty parts of cultures that happen to be in the Middle East or down in Africa or anywhere else for that matter. No, because then, then you, you, who are you to criticize violence? I'm somebody, I'm a human being. That's who I am to criticize violence. And I criticize it whether a white person does it or anybody else does it because the color of the skin doesn't determine the morality of what's happening. But the whole thing of like, well, you can't criticize what the state of Israel does. Yes, I can because they're fucking evil. The state, the ruling class, the violent gang of parasites that initiates violence against their own people and other people, just the way the U.S. government does, absolutely deserves to be condemned. And that's true even though... Some of the people on the other side also do things which should be condemned. And there are parts of their culture that some of them practice that should be condemned because they're violent and stupid and immoral caveman bullshit. And that's been true all over the world in so many different cultures. Anyway, now I'm just rambling on, so I guess I'll shut up. But that all came up because of the stupid Star Trek thing that, like, for some reason, if there's some other culture, you're not supposed to intervene and do the right thing. You're supposed to, like, let the thugs in their culture abuse the innocent people in their culture until they learn better. Like, you haven't learned better if that's your mentality about whether you should stop abusers from hurting innocent people. The answer is yes, you should. The color doesn't matter. The culture doesn't matter. The situation doesn't matter. The setting doesn't matter. The history doesn't matter. Stop aggressors from harming innocents. Why is that so difficult for so many people to grasp? <sighs> Carry on.